We got Doom on on the menu tonight, along with some Cyberpunk. I was like debating. I was like, do I want to play Cyberpunk or like Breath of the Wild or something? But I was like, I'm kind of like more more inclined to play Cyberpunk. I've just been really enjoying it. Uh, not that I dislike Breath of the Wild. Obviously, I don't. But I don't know. It just felt like it was like the better game to pick tonight. I don't know. Even though I played it for like the past few times I streamed, but it's just, it's a lot of fun. And I'm glad that I can actually run the game now and I'm like able to play it. Man, I was going to say something. And I, but I wanted to wait for the game to be started before I said it. And now, and now that we're here, I forgot what it was. So it can't be anything important. It must have been something like really dumb. So it's it's no big deal. Just have to uh have to just shoot your doom, my dude. I don't remember this game having such long loading screens. That's where I find out it's like installed on my hard drive and not my SSD. I guess it is like installing like the whole not installing but loading like the whole level. Like they're pretty big levels. I don't know why I said install. Loading. That's the, the term I'm looking for. I made it home today and it was like I don't know like one maybe almost closer to two o'clock I should say right and I like immediately was just like all right anyway I'm passing out like I'm going to bed <laughs> and then I slept till like six o'clock and then uh I like I ate so that's why the stream's late today let's get that uranium coating awesome and let's get a uh... Is this? Did you know that flipping the Doom logo upside down, it says wood? Like you're secretly playing with wood, Lamau. Trust me, bro. Don't flip the logo upside down. Just trust me. Hold on. You're telling me that I'm playing with somebody's wood? Nah. Hold on. Is this is this chat? Is this real? Now that Zoom logo, Doom logo, hold on. Chat. Alright, this is the old logo because it'll show up better. Hold on, okay. This is real, just trust me, bro. I, I don't know, this sounds, this sounds nefarious. This sounds like japes. All right? This can't be. You're telling me. There was secret satanic messaging this whole time in Doom when you flip it upside down. Oh my god. That's not do wood. It's woo. <laughs> Holy shit. He is here. Who? cares remember when in the 90s people thought that doom was going to turn people into satanists when the entire idea of the game is to uh you know kill demons that seems like pretty it seems like pretty anti-satan to me but again people also thought that pokemon would make people satanic so i think it was just if it was a video game or like dungeons and dragons you're basically, you're become like Stan, right? Which, uh, I don't, I don't know. I think it's a little off the mark there, but I mean, I'm not like a, I'm not like a, an expert on hailing Satan or anything like that, right? It's true. Everyone that plays Doom desperately needs Jesus in their lives. Well, that's just because they need to take off those thigh highs. And Jesus is the only way.
Everyone knows the the modern audience for uh, for for Doom now is um. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what's the right word? Uh, twinks? <laughs> oh yeah. God, I'm so fucking good at this video game. I can't even... I, I, sometimes I leave myself stunned. Like, that one could be such a fucking G. And then I look in the mirror and I'm like, yeah, hold on. Wait, that's me. And then I realize why I went to the bathroom. It wasn't look in the mirror. I, I said I have to pee. <laughs> and then, uh... And then, uh, uh, I can't think of anything else that rhymes. Sorry, I'm, I'm not a rapper. Uh, all I can think of is like, you know, C, right? But I, I can't really think of how to weave that into like a, you know, a real poetic mastery of the English language, right? I, I, I don't have like that kind of, um, that real hood rat sort of like rap god defiance of Eng English language right to, to, to make like sick rhymes like my bars uh, I, I wouldn't say they're cold right I, I think I think they're pretty hot they're just not flames right I'd say my bars are kind of like microwave right it, it's like it, it heats up but it, it's, it's not really like it's, it's not exactly the hottest right I think, honestly, I think maybe the hottest bars would be like bagel bites right out of the oven, right? That shit's like molten, right? Absolutely hot, right? The heat is insane. You know, actually now all I've done is really make myself want some bagel bites. <laughs> a few days ago and you know being a, a a native new yorker right bagels are like kind of like my specialty you know I, especially when you start making like breakfast sandwiches right nothing nothing screams new york right like quite like a bacon egg and cheese right and so i go to this bagel place and I order myself a bacon, egg, and cheese on a everything bacon. And these motherfuckers have the audacity to serve me a dry bacon, egg, and cheese. I never in my life have I ever experienced a dry bacon, egg, and cheese. All right. Like the yolk cooked. Just, just. I mean, I might as well have gotten scrambled eggs. It would have been wetter, right? You need that 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 runny yolk, right? Somehow, absolutely greaseless bacon, right? Not even like a like a hint of bacon grease. Again, it's, that's part of the charm of the sandwich when you're having like a you know a breakfast sandwich. It's, I mean, I don't get it. I don't know how they managed to do it. I guess it was supposed to be healthy, right? But motherfucker, like. It's a bacon, egg, and cheese. It's supposed to be like, I don't know. It's supposed to be like a little bit of slop is what I'm trying to say, right? Like, I'm not saying it has to be like the sloppiest because then it's just unpleasant to eat. But like, like what the hell, man? And then, and then these, these fools, right? These absolute, these <laughs> absolute nimrods. <laughs> They don't even have egg bagels. It's just plain. So it was like, I usually, my go-to is an egg everything bagel because it's just the tastiest one, right? It's what I want to have. 
No, I just had to go to regular everything bagel. That's boring. I was like, kind of like disappointed with myself with, a lot, with what I chose. I was like, man, you know, if I was going to like, if I was going to get anything, right? I probably would have had a better like experience if I got like the lock and schmear. Because at least then it would have had like some moistness to it. Okay, cool, it's dead. Why does it sound like the, uh, the, the fucking cleric beast? Hold on, I just realized something. It's kind of crazy. Oh. You have no idea how much I'm, like, instinctually, like, about to go use the, uh, the meat hook, only to remember it's not in this game. Oh god, there's another one. Another one. Oh shit. Alright, where is where's this fool? Ah, uh, that motherfucker. Oh fuck! Okay. Hold on. I have a chainsaw. That I should probably get to using. Oh, fuck. They couldn't kill me, but it was me in the end. That was my own demise. Okay. Now I know that there's two summoners there, not not just one. But anyway, the thing that triggered the story about my, my bagel escapades was um on the menu there, they also had, like, pizza bagels. Like, they just would put pizza stuff on the bagel. And, uh... It's weird, rather than going back there and like ordering that, I'm, I'm sure it's fine, it actually didn't look that bad, but I would almost rather just go to like Costco and buy like a box of bagel bites and just throw them in the oven, because like, you know, I'm not looking for like high quality dining, I'm looking for uh, absolutely like childish sustenance, right? Some dino nuggies. Maybe some, some smiley french fries. I don't know if anyone's ever had those. They actually kind of suck. They don't even really taste like french fries. I had them like once in my life because my, my friend's mom. I got a question. Would you say KFC is overpriced compared to other fast food restaurants? Um, right now, I think... Uh, I know this is kind of like a non-answer. Fuck, god damn it. This is kind of a non-answer. But to me right now, like, I almost think like every fast food joint is kind of overpriced, which I know isn't like the question, right? But like McDonald's really think they out here, right? They're comparable to like a real restaurant and can charge like fucking $20 for like a meal. Like, I guess it's not like 20. I'm like 15, but still, you know, that's like, that's like way too expensive, right? When you can get like a way better burger for like $5 more. I mean, that's still kind of crazy. A burger shouldn't really be like, like a burger meal shouldn't be like $20 to begin with, but like, I don't know. Inflation's a bitch. Don't go to Five Guys if you want to preserve your wallet. Yeah, really don't. Um, but KFC, I guess it depends on what you get. I don't know. They have that, um... They've got like this like box that has like a, an assortment of like chicken product, right? It's supposed to be like a like a I guess like a family like meal thing. It's like twenty five dollars, and you get like some some chicken like 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 fried chicken or whatever, right? You know, as you would. Uh, you get some like chicken nuggets, some like potato wedges, and like some biscuits. I mean, I don't know if it's worth $25, but, like, I got it once. Like, I, when did I get it? I want to say I got it, um... I got it, like, around Thanksgiving time because I didn't have a turkey to cook. <laughs> so I bought this 
this meal and it was you know it was like 25 bucks and it was just it comes in this giant ass box it's almost like a pizza box and that thing i probably had leftovers for like the next like three or four days like it kind of fed me for like a week <laughs> like it wasn't that bad uh well, not, you know, not like a, a whole week, like a work week almost, right? Like it was like five days I had food. So, I mean, it's like 25 bucks and then like I didn't have to go grocery shopping that week. <laughs> I mean, granted, it wasn't that great. Like it, it tasted like KFC, right? But, I mean, I, I don't mind like, you know, like the price per meal that I got out of it. Like it, it, it went, it went far, right? I refuse to believe KFC is charging Romanians U.S. prices because I got the equivalent of $15 for a large burger meal. Yeah, like... No, that's like a... That's about right. At least that's what, like... That's what McDonald's is doing. I, I think I can go get, like, a, a Big Mac meal here in, in Oregon. And it's, like, $16 and change. Like, it's not worth it, right? I can go to the fucking teriyaki place that's, like, five minutes away. And get like some teriyaki chicken and rice and that's uh oh god fuck you that's uh that's like eleven dollars so it's like do i go to mcdonald's and buy like chemical burger that will kill me or do i go buy like delicious teriyaki chicken right this is true mcdonald's is also mad retarded <laughs> Right? And the teriyaki place even has bulgogi, right? Which goes hard. And the bulgogi, you can get for as much as the Big Mac. So why the fuck would I ever get the, the hamburger from McDonald's, right? When I can get fucking Korean food, right? Problem is, I didn't care where to get ch cheap fast food anymore, because fast food ain't cheap anymore. I, I do say... Right? Like, why would I ever get the, the Big Mac versus the Korean food? Um, it was actually, uh, to be honest, uh, it's, it's because uh, sometimes I crave the, I crave the, the, the McNuggies. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> like, so, uh, that'll do it. I'm like, huh, oh, yeah, nuggets sound pretty good. Oh, why am I using this? Oh, fuck. I hate summoners so much. These guys are on site. You know who's on site? This is completely unrelated to uh, to Doom right now. But I saw a meme where someone it was like a Twitter post, and someone was like, "I mean, you know, fuck like comfort characters, right? Who's your confront character, right? Like, who's a character that you absolutely fucking hate, all right?" And immediately my mind was like, Peter Pan. That motherfucker is on site. Okay, I. Cannot stand Peter Pan. <laughs> like, I hate that dude. <laughs> you know why Birth by Sleep might quite possibly be the greatest Kingdom Hearts game? It's because there is an objective in that game when you play as Terra. That just says, put Peter Pan in his place. And, you know, that's all I ever wanted in life. Just kick the shit out of Peter Pan. Hey, cool, a chainsaw. You know, for when you go the whole game without picking up the chainsaw until you make it to hell. Like, okay. Which is exactly where Peter Pan's getting sent. To hell. I think I... Yeah, okay. Can totally get that. Hell yeah. Oh, it was kind of a waste, but I got it.
I did it just because I could. Uh, man, I gotta like actually try. Ooh, hold on. I missed a missed an argent core. Hold on. Those are kind of important. I need those. I always forget I have the the chainsaw in this game because the Oh okay, it's behind the blue door. Okay. What is a It's a rune trial. You see Edmund talking about how much his next project is a big deal to him. Uh by next project is he talking about Mugenics cuz it better be a big deal to finish Mugenics cuz I want to play it. Why is the map smoldering? Are the electronics literally burning up? Yeah, you know, there was like a soldering issue. Speaking of soldering, I need to like really learn how to solder. Like, but I, I'm, I'm going to, but I, you know, first I need to get the supplies, but I want to mod the fuck out of my guitars. Mugenics, yeah, he means that one. Good. I want to fucking play Mugenics. I'm so sick of waiting for it because it genuinely I've been so excited for that game for so long. Is the rune trial also behind? And now I've like I kind of want to get a uh, like a shitty like parts caster cuz uh I've been seeing like pictures and stuff of people you know, but pictures and videos of people uh making the Johnny Silverhand guitar and like I kind of want to do that but I don't want to buy like a like a good quality like already made guitar like I want to get like a D DIY body and stuff like that and then I can you know cut up and fuck up and all that stuff and I think it'll uh, it'd be a fun project but I have to I don't know there's too many like cool guitar things that I want to do and it's like I have to like choose where I spend my money wisely it's like I don't really need to like make another guitar right but at the same time i'm like i i think it's way cooler to like try to make something than just to like buy something right but right now i'm basically just kind of interested in uh getting the right pickups for the cuomo caster that i have uh so i don't know i know i talked about it last time i played doom but i don't know something about doom right i think it's the it's that like heavy metal like soundtrack it just makes me think about guitars i guess this one doesn't really have that much heavy metal in it i was actually uh if i remember there was a an interview with mick gordon where he was talking about when he was making the music for this game and like id told him like don't do like they're like don't do metal i guess they they didn't want metal to be the identity of doom and that's kind of fucking dumb don't you think because like what is doom if not metal like it was literally born from like the original guys at id software like having like a D, &D campaign and turn it into weird Space Marine bullshit. And then they liked heavy metal, so they made bootleg versions of songs they like to put in the soundtrack as like a MIDI. And then in 2016 they're like, uh, okay, so we can't have metal in Doom. I mean, even like, look at, there's that one song from the, I think it's the, like, yeah, probably, I think it's the Doom 3 theme. That shit goes hard. I can't believe I just used that rocket to kill myself. I swear, half of the time I die, I feel like it's splash damage because I'm not, like, accurately gauging the distance between, like, an enemy and I. It is a legitimate issue of skill. They cannot kill me. They can just bait me into killing myself.
You know, except for when they kill me, right? But we don't talk about those. It's kind of funny how the Kako demons were still kind of a threat in this game, but then they're turned into like fodder in Eternal. You can like, it's very easy to take them out. It always kind of rustled my jimmies in a way, because I think Kakos are cool. Spicy little meatballs. Momentum stuff. I don't even know what I did. I'm just glad John Romero and Carmack are doing well these days with how important they are. I feel like, I don't know, like, I mean, I know John Romero was like working on a project, but I really don't remember like whatever like happened to it, but oh god, uh, can I just chainsaw the fat boy? I can, cool, I'm gonna do that. And I know like John Carmack is basically just kind of like trying to innovate the, uh, like the tech side of gaming. I know he's really into VR, which is funny. You'd think with him being so into VR right now that, uh, and like innovating the hardware side of gaming, you think he'd kind of get headhunted by Valve because Valve is really pushing that shit. Uh, they're really into like, you know, VR and like the Steam Deck. I know they're trying to get the Deckard off the ground. I know he was with Facebook for Oculus and stuff, and that kind of, like, went under. I don't know, maybe... Maybe Valve just isn't the place for him, which is fine. I know he's, like, really also big into, like, open source and stuff, which... I don't know how well that meshes with uh, Valve's methods of releasing things. Like, Homeboy really, like, released the source code for Doom 3, which is pretty dope. But I think that helped someone make, like, a VR version for Doom 3, which sounds like something I really need to play. It could either be really cool or, like, awful. But... I really kinda wish more games would do cool things with VR. What the hell was that? What? Like one thing that really kind of bothers me is uh, like Capcom keeping uh, the VR versions of Resident Evil 7 and 8 only on PlayStation. Where it's like, okay, well, like think about like the market share of PlayStation VR. Like, why is that exclusive to, like, PlayStation? Oh, shit. When most of the people who, like, use VR, um, are on PC, right? It's just stupid. I know, uh, well, actually, I don't know. But I have heard that there's also now a VR version of Resident Evil 4 Remake. And that's on PlayStation. Oh, those are Lost Souls. Fuck Lost Souls! I hate them! But, and then, like, the original version? You know, VR, uh, like, the original Resident Evil 4, that VR version is only on Oculus. So it's like, I don't know what the hell Capcom, like, is doing with their fucking shit. Like, I just want to be able to like play that shit on my PC. It sucks like I think uh, I think Half-Life Alex is one of like the best VR games I've played, but in some ways it's kind of disappointing. And that's a shame. Oh fuck. Uh which button is super shotgun? Uh, 
Like, I think one of the things that really kind of felt lackluster with uh, Half-Life Alex is just the complete lack of, like, melee. With how, like, iconic Gordon Freeman's crowbar is, you'd think there'd be some kind of melee combat in Half-Life Alex, and there just isn't. There's no melee weapon. You can't use, like, you can't pick up props and, like, use them as, like, makeshift weapons, which would be really cool. I can understand, I can understand not having, like, the makeshift weapon thing, because that's probably really difficult to, like, program. But, like, not even, like, giving Alex some kind of melee weapon. Like, it just seems very un-Half-Life. The other... Motherfucker. The other thing I think I really didn't enjoy about Alex, and it's kind of like a personal, like, gripe. And I, I can understand why they made the decision. I just, I'm not exactly, like, a whole fan of it. Is that all the weapons are, like, handguns. So, like, even, like, the shotgun, right? Like, you use it one-handed, right? The, the SMG, use it one-handed. And obviously, like, the pistol is a handgun, right? And I know because it's like it just makes it easier, right? Because two-handed weapons in VR can be kind of a pain. But I don't know. I think Boneworks did a pretty good job from what I've seen. I haven't played it, so I don't know how it feels. I know some people who played it and they liked it. I know Bone Labs was also pretty good. Again, I haven't played it, but a few of my friends have played it. And... What the hell did I just get? Oh, invulnerability. Oh. Well, now I don't really need it. Oh! Early chain gun? Hey, maybe dying wasn't such a bad thing. <laughs> I don't know what it is with id why every game has to include lost souls and make them the most annoying thing to ever like exist I think the worst thing they did with Eternal was bring back the pain elemental because, yeah, I mean, they caused me pain. Man, the chain gun fucks in this game. Think how close I was to a checkpoint when I died. That's a little disappointing. Oh, how do I get over there? Man, there's all these like there's little nooks and crannies that you can get to in this game and I get so lost. Again, I'm kind of glad with Eternal how they handled, uh, like, they usually put the map at, like, the end of the level, right? Oh, I'm supposed to jump across. Okay. And then you can, like, backtrack and, like, find all the secrets. I think they made that a little bit easier than in this game. Again, I... I know I talk about it and compare the two a lot. But it, it's just, like playing this again after you know playing eternal a bunch like you can definitely really see like how they they learn to like make a better game right <laughs> and it's funny it actually kind of surprises me you like, go online and you see how many people prefer this game 
And I, I, I don't really know why. To me, Eternal is just like an upgraded version of this game. Like it has, it has more solid gameplay. Like it, I feel like everything's just a little bit tighter. Like systems like blend into each other really well. Like the flamethrower and the, the grenade thrower, stuff like that. Like they're all like really easy to use, right? The the chainsaw is like just a quick tap of the button. Like it's got the uh, the blood punch is a really good mechanic. The dash is such a great mechanic. It just the pace of it is much more like frantic and like it just makes you feel like a fucking G when you clear an arena. It's funny, everyone talks about, you know, these games like, oh no, like, you're the boss fight for the demons, right? And then, like, when the game helps you, like, you know, gives you combat that makes you feel like a fucking boss, where you just demolish everything, and, like, they're like, no, actually, I prefer the other game. And you're like, huh? Right? Like... I'd say this game doesn't have its moments, but like, I think it's like the fluidity of combat in Doom Eternal just feels like so much more rewarding to like master. <laughs> that just brings me here. Okay, is there, uh... There is some stuff over here. Look, it's UB Dead Guy. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do some of this. I haven't really upgraded these at all, have I? Let's go with power up effect on this. Oh, yeah. Dexterity. Swap. Ah, that. Wow, I've been really ignoring this, huh? There we go. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a little bit of a shitter not grabbing those upgrades, but. It is what it is. Where's the little dude? No, that's not down there. Oh, cool. Okay. That's really, like, cleverly hidden. Okay. Oh. Wow. Wasting my fucking double jump. Mancubus. Red guy. <laughs> I love just red guy. Up there. So I think I, there's a door that I have to open. Right. Oh, I'll get the, the recon zone. That's, um. Let's go with the mobile turret. That thing. It's a weird thing that id Software for years was mostly making games that innovate on tech, with the gameplay mostly being consistently fine. Quake 2, Doom 3, Rage, maybe until Doom 2016. Id Software? I feel like... Doom 3... I guess Quake 2 to an extent, too. Yeah, hit that point where... The games were, like... Second... 
to the engine, right? Or the tech. Like, to me, Quake 2 is just... Uh, it's not as fun as the original. Like, it has its merits, and it's, like, technically impressive for the time, but to me, like, Quake 2 just kind of paved the way for Half-Life, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> which is, like, a much more, like, not only is, but, like, the Gold Source engine pretty, like, innovative and, you know, used the Quake engine as a base, right? But, uh, to me, it, it's just a better game. How is that not what I need to do? What? Huh? Fuck you. But yeah, and then, like, Doom 3 was another, like, game where it was very technically impressive, but... I mean, I think my, my opinion of Doom 3 is kind of softened, but I mean, it, it, isn't, it isn't like the most fun game, right? I wouldn't like rank it among my favorites. Like, the game is, is fine, which to me is like kind of shitty for an id game, <laughs> right? Like to make a like a a good game from id right that's like i know you can do better right like <laughs> like the standards much higher and then rage just i don't rage looked really fucking boring the whole mega texture thing was so stupid cuz just like it made the game like unnecessarily uh like i don't know like how to put it like like unnecessarily like demanding i feel like and like it left um it just like i don't know how to, I, I don't really know how to put it like the texture like they didn't look that good right like the game looked it looked passable, right? It looked like an just an average game, like at the time. There's nothing really special about it. Okay, I guess I'm going the wrong way. How do I get over there then? I guess. All right. I see. Oh, but it's like they wanted to just try to make something that was like new for the technology, right? Like, I don't think it really went anywhere. But yeah, and then I think Doom 2016 came out and they're like, what if we just make a fun video game? Like, and it, it worked. And then they're like, okay, what if we make the video game more fun with Eternal? And it, it worked, right? Like, why are they killing each other? Oh, we got a Baron of Hell, that's why. Oh, I'm gonna do, I'm do something a little funny, right? Bye bye. <laughs> God, I fucking love this upgrade so much. Anyone who picks the rotate cylinder is like actually just a square. They're like SpongeBob when he becomes normal, right? He's like, hey, how are you? I, I, my favorite minigun upgrade is, is the, the barrel spin. It's like, all right. Are you gonna say your favorite breakfast food is buttered toast? Like, where the hell is this guy? I was like, I have a quad damage, literally, like, waiting. 
Yeah, Bert. You, know, you want to help me uh, do my taxes? You want to help me uh, defrag my hard drive? You are lame. Actually, now I'm starting to think about breakfast again. You know what I hate? I hate English muffins. It's just, they, they do not do anything for me. My mom used to eat them all the time. And like, she'd always be like, come on, like have an English muffin, right? Like, I don't know. I want nothing to do with them. Oh my God, another one. I just remember Rage had John Goodman in it for like the ending or some shit. I wouldn't even ask to play it since I know it's dull from memory. You know, I just remembered that they made a Rage too. Was it even made like in-house by it or was that like another developer just made it for them? Rage 2 had kind of like more of an interesting aesthetic going on with like the whole like... I don't know what to call it. Like apocalypse punk aesthetic like the best I can come up with That's, that seemed kind of neat I feel like yeah the original rage didn't really have much of like a unique identity to it I don't know if either of them are like actually interesting to play I remember like seeing my dad play the original rage for like a little bit and like I remember it did not like spark any desire to play the game in me, even when I was younger. I was like, oh, it looks like, looks like a game, right? <laughs> like, I remember uh, one of the big things I heard about, like that actually made it seem kind of cool. I remember reading about uh, Rage and PC Gamer uh, when they're, you know, doing the previews and stuff for it. And they really hyped up the AI for the game and like how reactive it was and stuff. and. I don't really hear anyone talking about it anymore to like, you know, and you talk about video games and like which ones have like good AI, you still really only hear like fear, right? I'd be like, oh man, that game had such good AI, right? Like they, <laughs> nobody talks about like something like Rage or, I mean, I don't even know like what other games were supposed to have like crazy AI, right? I know what Call of Duty Ghosts, right? The fishes move, right? That's a that's crazy AI. Look at all this lore that I'm never gonna read. There are people in this world who are like heavily invested in the lore of Doom, and I really like I don't get it. There's like nothing special going on. I like think the only id game I'd say to play is Quake 1. That campaign still really holds up the atmosphere. I fucking love Quake 1. My only issue with Quake 1 is that episode 4 can be a, a bit of a pain. That's really about it. But Quake 1 is like absolutely like it's up there. It's my favorite Quake game. And it like the sort of like remaster that Night Dive did and they added more uh, episodes and stuff like that. Really good stuff. Speaking of adding like, I don't know, just like really good shooters. I know they released like a HD like remaster update for uh, Dusk and I like still need to try it because Dusk is one of those games I will forever just like infinitely shill because it's such a good game and I love it and I should play it again. It's one of probably the most unique games in the genre if you ask me of like specifically like the the boomer shooter genre right because it's it's cool because the game kind of doesn't feel like it'd be anything special like it just seems like it's like a really solid game at first. 
And then you get to like partway through the second chapter and you get to like the Euclidean labs and like, oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> like, and then episode three of Dusk, oh, it's magnificent. It has two of like the coolest boss battles in games, like back to back. And I, I say like, I don't know, people might not like, like, the penult oh, penultimate boss of Dust, like that it's just kind of like fighting a guy that's just you, right? But, oh my god, I love boss battles where the enemy is like, you're equal, right? They have all of your abilities, right? And you just have to like be better when it's like your, your boss fight. It's just playing a really good AI in like deathmatch. Oh my god. I, like, I, I love it, right? And that's what really messed me up with Doom Eternal. Because I thought that's what like the final boss was gonna be with how they like hyped it up. And I, w w when I play Doom Eternal, like, you'll see why I thought it, right? If you don't already know. And then they just have like, I don't know, it's just like big robot. And that's like really fucking boring. Like I sleep. Like okay, don't get me wrong. Big robots are cool, right? Like, I like me a big robot. However, in the context of the Doom Eternal final boss, like for the DLC, right? You know, Old Gods Part Two. Giant robot was not the enemy I wanted to fight. That would have been like a good, like, precursor to Final Boss. Right? You fight Guy in big robot suit, and then you fight Guy. Amazing, right? Go for that. That'd be cool. Just having it be Guy in big robot suit? Nah, no. That's not, like, Doom to me. Again, another thing with Doom Eternal that I really didn't like because it would have been so cool. There was never a moment where you actually got to pilot one of the giant mechas and like, again, that's very disappointing. Speaking of good old school shooters, the first Unreal looks really cool campaign wise. Too bad Epic Games never released the source code for it after they took it down. I, I don't think I've actually ever played the original Unreal. I've always just played like Unreal Tournament. I know, uh, I know it's like one of those games where like everyone who's played it like loves it. Oh man. Okay, let's continue. It's like oh, oh god, what's that one game? Uh Among Evil? It was a pretty cool game. I never finished it. It had like a lot of weapons in it. That always kind of gave me like Unreal vibes from what I knew about Unreal. Hell on Mars. <laughs> Get it? Because Doom 2 is hell on Earth. Guys, look at what we did. Rapid deployment. The Argent Tower is destroyed. The portal can no longer be closed from this side. The hell energy flows from a location in their world we call the Well. But you've returned. The only flesh and blood to walk between dimensions. <laughs> so there may be a way. Wait, why? Vega is trying to access Olivia's files. If you can get to the nearest terminal, we will provide you with information. Look at those cacos just flying around. Goofy ass. I love this track because it's like a remix of. What is it? I think. Is it E1M2 or E1M3? I don't remember. It's definitely one of the episode one tracks. 
Let me. Oh. Let that open. It's basically a better Quake 2, plus it could actually compete with Half-Life in terms of environmental design. See, like that? That is a good game, right? And I wish Valve would just, like, make games again like you know it, it is a little disappointing that valve kind of refuses to make games unless there's like some like way they can like innovate which i get it like they're like it's like a, a team of you know or like a development studio rather because there's teams in the studio sort of right that they kind of work on what they want to work on but, you know, I get it. Like, a bunch of smart guys and gals. I, I don't know how, how who's who works at Valve, so I'll just say guys and gals, right? Smart people at Valve. And they want to just, like, they want to make breakthroughs, right? But, like... Oh, I went back. Like, they made... They made such good games. And now it's, like... The only shit we get from them is like Counter Strike 2 and like Dota 2. Like, it's weird. For how much they want to innovate, it's actually really annoying how much they push like games as a service and multiplayer only. And it's like, what happened to like just making like a really fucking good game, right? It, it's like, to me, that's like backwards, right? Like, what happened? Like, and Counter-Strike 2, I don't know, I'm kind of pissed with Counter-Strike 2 because, like, it's so, like, half-cooked. Like, it, it needed, they released it, and it needed way more time in the oven, and they just didn't. Like, they were like, alright, everyone who plays CSGO is now going to be our beta tester. Instead of just letting people into the beta, and they just replace CSGO. Like, I, to me, that's one thing I cannot, like, stand is when like a game updates so severely that like the game that it used to be like is no longer playable right there's like it, like ceases to exist so like csgo just becoming cs2 is like not cool to me like they should have just released cs2 as its own game and like because like what if someone doesn't want to play that version of the game? But now they're just kind of stuck with it and they either have to get used to it or they stop playing Counter-Strike, right? It bears your mark. Olivia's personal laboratory is not part of the registered facilities database. What the fuck? Level clearance will be required to locate it. Granted. It's the same thing with how like I really enjoyed Payday 2 at launch. From the north sector of the as it updated more and more. About the game became like away. utterly unrecognizable to me, and I just didn't have fun with it anymore. I'll bring the tram power online to I, take you there. But I don't like what Payday 2 became. To TF2 is another game where updates nearby. just continuously made the game worse to me. The updates were, were really good in TF2 until they weren't, which like sounds stupid. But to me, it's like once, once they were done with like all of like the class updates, right? I felt like all the updates that happened later just made the game worse. And I don't know how people still hold on to TF2 like the way they do, because to me, it's just, to me, the game has been dead since like the man economy update launched it's just been like a shambling corpse and valve just keeps it on life support because they make money off of it same thing with fucking counter-strike right i mean counter-strike was way more popular and like you know i had the whole competitive like esports scene and stuff so that's a little bit different but just the way like they just keep it online because it makes them money right why why make a single player game that people only have to buy once when we can make a, a free-to-play game full of gambling microtransactions, right? And make loads of money. And then we'll let people sell their cosmetics that they had to pay for, 
you know and uh we'll put it on the market you know they'll, they'll put it on a marketplace so that people can like auction for their shit basically and then we'll just take a cut of that too so like we're just we're making money we don't have to do anything blue box is getting stuffed into tf2 it was gross as fuck people gave ea or blizzard shit for starting it but valve was there before yeah valve everyone likes to ignore i mean okay i guess the cs2 gambling like thing was kind of a tipping point for people with valve but valve doesn't get nearly as, as much shit as they deserve for their part in, in loot boxes and shit and, like people were more mad about like you know the whole like oh kids are gambling with like counter-strike skins and not like okay but these skins are made in like predatory loot boxes it's like you can get like a shitty skin for playing the game right at like the end of a match but if you want like the cool skins right you have to buy a key from a box that drops randomly for you right and then when you spend the what is it like three dollars three fifty on the key then you might have a chance of getting a cool skin right or you'll just get trash and it's just like it, it's just and then there's like a whole like this whole group of people like trying to like scam people for their items so that they can like you know like steal from them and it's like it's gross like i remember my friend had listed a knife on the market or something like that for CSGO and uh, collect all 15 hell relics and reach the, al reach the altar okay and like the dude uh, the dude like tried to steal the skin from him it was like really fucking bizarre so the way it happened was um they they basically uh they like the guy said okay I'll I'll buy the skin from you and I'll like PayPal you the money or something like that instead of just going to the Steam market that way he's like oh you know you'll get more money right instead of like having to get rid of some of the cut by selling it on Steam right and we were like teenagers at the time and uh so my friend had someone like that he trusted hold the skin on their account right and so the idea was they would be the middleman so like that friend would have the trade open with the guy <laughs> uh so that once the money went through right the guy would like accept the trade and like give the guy like give the the buyer the skin it was like really convoluted and dumb but like i guess it was like a way so they could be like hey like don't like no one's gonna fuck anyone over here and so the dude uh he changed all of his account details to be my friends right and then he messaged the the, the middleman and he was like hey it's me your friend <laughs> like <laughs> It was like really fucking fun. Don't forget Valve also basically made a horde mode, which was cool, but then they made it into a gambling dumpster fire and everyone who plays it just wants to earn real life profits. That was the second worst thing TF2 did. Honestly, I never liked Man vs. Machine. I thought it was fucking boring when I first played it. I thought it was a waste of an update. Oh, we're gonna get the pinkies. Look at that boyo. I kind of love the pinkies in this game. I also love that glory kill. Ripping the demon's tooth out and then slitting its own throat with it. Kind of fucking metal. Yeah, I know the 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 community around Valve's games to me like I've kind of grown to like have a distaste to them for some way like I 
don't know how to put it. So like, yeah, CSGO and like TF2 is full of like... So CSGO is full of like people who want to like fuck you over and scam you, right? TF2 is full of like bots and cheaters and stuff just looking to make money, right? Dota is Dota, right? Like, I, honestly, Dota is... To me, that community is just as bad as like League of Legends, right? It's just like a toxic shithole, right? It's... It's not worth ever trying to communicate with anyone who plays, like, a MOBA, honestly. And then, like, even, like, the Half-Life community, all right? Half-Life has reached a point to, like, okay, I've gone on, like, Discord servers that are, like, tangentially related to Half-Life in some way, whether it's, like, like, mostly, like, with modding and stuff like that, stuff related to Half-Life mods. And the only servers I've ever found people who think uh, a video of someone let's just say you know hurting themselves very permanently right the only people who ever found that funny were people in half-life servers so to me I'm like okay so people who like half-life and are online are actually like fucked up and like sick in the head and like not in like a funny way like haha -ha. like and just like a like you need to like just get offline and stop talking like like you need to like just get some fresh air open your window or something like and then even i had like a, a server with some friends and like they had some friends a friend like friends of theirs that like i wasn't exactly like too familiar with but i know one of them is like a big valve fanboy and he loves half-life and he also thought that same video was very funny and everyone was like dude what the fuck right like why are you posting this and he's like because it's funny and it's like okay so like yeah to me it's just like all right half-life fans are kind of at least i don't know like young ones i'll say i'll, I'll do that young half-life fans are uh, are kind of irredeemable to me <laughs> like <laughs> it's the only place like on, at least on like discord right and it's kind of like made me not even want to like participate in like public discords like i know i have my own right and like i kind of dread that ever becoming like popular like or like large enough that that would become an issue that i have to deal with right because i don't want to deal with that and I would hate to, like, have to, like, isolate myself from the people who watch my streams because they would think that's funny, right? Like, I'll put it this way. Like, because people might say, oh, you're a hypocrite because you think the low-tier god meme is funny, right? And I, I've had, like, I've had people sort of kind of, like say like it's like i'll joke about something but then like when it's actually like in reality like it's uncomfortable right uh but like so the low tier god meme right where you know you should you know execute yourself now let's just say right like that's funny because what like his whole rant is like unhinged right and he's like ridiculous about it like it's less about like telling someone to do that is funny and it's the idea that he got so heated and like <laughs> he had like a whole fucking speech like impromptu in that moment is funny but then like you show someone like you just post a video of someone like blowing their own head off and like you go that's the joke like that's not funny that's like disgusting and like I don't ever want to talk to you, right? Like, <laughs> that, that's kind of like, I don't think that's hypocritical. I think that's a pretty um, level-headed take. I think, I think most people would agree that the latter, there's nothing funny about that, right? And the fact that some people think it's funny It's just, I, again, I, I don't, I don't want to deal with them, so I don't like Half-Life fans. <laughs>
It's very much accurate. The only chill ones are left for dead folks if you ignore the de degenerate mods. I haven't really interacted with the half le uh, the left for dead fan base, so I, I couldn't really tell you. Um, I think last time left for dead was like a was like a, a thing that I was sort of tangentially like connected to. Uh, it was because people were excited about like a source code leak in Dota 2 that like hinted that Left 4 Dead 3 might be being made and then that never went anywhere. So it sucks. I love Left 4 Dead. I think um I think I've I've encountered some Left 4 Dead fans who are like really toxic about like games that are similar to Left 4 Dead. Like I don't know. Like you tell some people who are really hardcore in the Left 4 Dead that you think Back for Blood is like an okay game and like they act like you just like tore Jesus off the cross and shat on him. Like <laughs> Like no, you can't you can't like the ripoff when it's like eh. I mean it, listen I didn't play it on launch so I don't know how bad it was when it came out but like I paid like twenty bucks to to play like Back for Blood with some coworkers and like it was fun like we had fun playing it it was it wasn't horrible I I definitely played worse games right. And so I think, I think the hate for Back for Blood is pretty overblown. And it's like, I don't know. Didn't see people getting so mad over Vermintide. And it's like, yeah, I know like Turtle Rock was like, yeah, we're the creators of Left 4 Dead. But like, I mean, hey, that got people's attention and got people talking about the game. I can't really like deny, like, or like, I can't, uh, I can't knock the uh, the hustle, right? Back roll is fine. I just dislike the god awful marketing. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely seen like more egregious games. Dark Tide though. Oh my god, Dark Tide's so good. I need to play more of that game. I don't even like 40k. Like, to me, like 40k is like a fucking disaster. Like trying to like of like, like the lore is just like, I don't know. It's like a whole other can of worms. But uh, hey, it, sometimes they make some pretty cool video games, right? I think that's kind of like Warhammer as a whole though. Warhammer is like a fucking mess. I think 40k just bothers me because like there are people who take 40k like really seriously. Or like you think they like they think the Imperium of Man is like a real thing and they like are like actually worshipping the God Emperor, right? And you're just like, hold on bro, like that's just like a tabletop game, like chill. I don't know. It's like people who, you know, like the first word out of their mouth is like heresy or some shit like that. And it's just like, all right, like you're, it sucks too. Cause like, there's some like, some like decent memes, right? That like come from like 40 K, like, you know, when something's like so fucking like awful, right? I used to see shit like, you know, I declare exterminatus on this thread and shit like that. Like, I mean, it's funny shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Some, some people take it like too far and it becomes like a worrying part of their identity. And it, it, it's kind of like, it's kind of difficult to be around, <laughs> right? Like. 
Glory killing demons drops armor. Use the combat shotgun to eliminate all targets where the timer expires. Health levels are critical. Use armor to survive. Oh boy. So I have to kill eight enemies without dying by using the shotgun. Oh god, there's imps. This is not... Oh, what the fuck? I don't know why it was going to be the explosive one. I guess that's just the one I always like to use. Is that a pinky? forgot that there was a time limit so though i don't think anything in terms of awful online communities compared yet to dead by daylights oh god i see dead by daylight like everyone's just a fucking dick i don't know it's a pretty toxic community i think mobas are still worse but I feel like a lot of people who play Dead by Daylight like just want to be dicks to each other, right? Uh, seek and destroy. Uh, let's let's go with that. You know, let's actually swap out. I think what what helps Dead by Daylight from being completely irredeemable is uh, the fact that there's like only post game chat. Like people can't shit talk you while you're playing the game and like actively ruin. I mean, they can still like make it a fucking nightmare to play. But every streamer I see trying to play that game just looks miserable. Yeah, I still playing the game is awful, but like it could be worse. Yeah, some people just like the way they play is like got like it just makes you want to fucking die, right? Like it, it's not a it's not like a fun game, right? Like. Like, shitty killers can just, like, hook you once and then they camp you for the whole match, right? And then, like, you're just gone from the game and, like, there's nothing you can do, right? And then, like, bully squads of survivors are just, like, their goal isn't even to, like, complete the game. It's just to be, like, the most irritating people in the world. Like, it's just, like, I, I, they're... Like, people go into that game specifically because they want to make others miserable, right? And then it just kind of, like, feeds off each other because then, like, people are made miserable. And so then they go out and they spread the misery, right? And it just... <laughs> it's just awful, right? It's awful for everyone. It sucks too, cause like I like the idea of like the asymmetric like multiplayer games, especially like the horror focused ones. But like, it kind of sucks that Dead by Daylight is the standard, and it's not that great of a game. Like it, it's not awful. Like mechanically, it's just really fucking boring, cause like. A lot of it is just pressing W and left click, right? If you're a survivor. I mean, even like killers, right? Like the chase is like W and left click. I mean, they try to switch it up with some abilities and stuff like that and perks to make things more unique. But I don't know. To me, it, 
the core gameplay is so boring and repetitive that like I don't know how people get like so much time into it. Like I, I have hundreds of hours in that game somehow and like I don't know why. I think for a while it was just a game that like my friend and I would just like hop on and play because like we we're like oh, I don't know what to play you know some DVD I guess and then like and then we just have like some like bad matches and we just like ah fuck this game All right and then for a while I was like playing killer like I'd have <laughs> I'd have a bad day and I'm just like all right I'm gonna go play like fucking Wesker or some shit right and, like. I'm gonna I'll play like pyramid head and I'll just send people to like the cut cages <laughs> like <laughs> That was like my only goal I was like I'd be like pyramid head. like all right I just want to be able to get do like pyramid heads like executions like that's it like just Go around sending people to the fucking cages and then like swinging your fucking giant sword all over them Good shit. Honestly, fun as fuck. But it's not actually. It's it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's actually awful because the game sucks. I know I just said it's not that bad, but it, it sucks. All I know is they're trying to introduce rotating game modes, kind of like League of Legends, so they don't keep bleeding players. They should try just making the game fun. I mean, I guess they tried and failed, right? I think there's a huge issue with that game in that behavior is a very, I don't know, to me. Now, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not John Game Dev, right? I'm not, I'm not Video James. But to me, right, as a player who has played many video game, right? Even some Hideo game, right? To me, behavior are absolutely incompetent developers. They just kind of struck gold and they were like the first to do like something and it caught on. And then like all of their competition sucks. Like gun media, like their f gun media can't make a good game and they don't want to make a good game. They're like grifters. So like Friday the 13th was like, okay, that was actually like a fun game, right? But then they just dropped all support for it. And they had the perfect excuse with the lawsuit, right? Surrounding the rights to the game. Which I don't know how much I really believe them that like that lawsuit would keep them from further developing the game, but like I can't I like I'm not involved, so I, I can't know, right? So then what they went on to make Predator. That game got dropped, like, within a year, right? Uh I don't know if they made, did they make the Evil Dead one? I don't know if they did, but I know they made the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game and that game's, surprise, surprise, it's having a load of issues, right? And the community is really fucking mad at the developers because they're not fixing problems with the game. And like the developers are like banning people for like maybe being a little heated on the subreddit, right? And it's like, well, you know, you could try not insulting them, but at the same time, it's like maybe the developers uh, could fix the fucking game instead of sending out fucking passive aggressive tweets like a bunch of fucking 14 year olds. And it's just like, oh, God, I don't know why game developers. I feel as as of late are like. Shocked. They're like appalled that there are people out there who play video games that like hold like developers accountable, right? Like they think they're above criticism because they tried. This is all to say Scott Cawthon is more likely better devs than any of these studios. Scott Cawthon does like a fucking like, you know, block based fucking like babby click team programming engine right and he is like a more dedicated developer than any of these studios honestly i know he made like fnaf world and that game like initially was like really controversial because of like 
how underdeveloped it was when it came out and you know he was charging money for it but you know what he he, he took the criticism people were fucking pissed too all right because it wasn't like the trailers at all and they tore into him right and and he took the game down and when he fixed it he made it free and he gave everyone fucking refunds right if they asked for a refund he gave it to them you know he fucking owned what he did and people like i i that's why it makes me so mad because he's such like he's such a good developer in terms of like his like ethics and stuff like that and the fact that he like got chased away from game development because he made some fucking donations to like a political party or whatever or candidate that people didn't like it's like okay like like the fuck's wrong with you and they're like sending threats to like him and his family too like it's not okay and it sucks too again I'm glad he seems to be like a little bit more involved in the series, even if he's not like actively developing them anymore. I know there is like a new game coming out. There was a trailer for it that got leaked, and then he was like, Oh, yeah, I guess since the trailer got leaked, like you guys can talk about it now. Like, <laughs> I forgot what it's called. I think it's, um, I'll look it up real quick. It actually it looks like a really cool game. Uh, FNAF Into the Pit. It's cool. It's like a 2D horror game. It seems like it has a little bit of, like, adventure game elements. And, uh, I think it's based on one of the books. The, uh, the Spring Bonnie design in that game is fucking gnarly. I'm, like, I'm really excited for it. It looks like it's actually gonna be, like... A pretty quality game which I'm glad because I feel like I feel like help wanted was something that I wanted to look forward to and then I found out that it was all mini games and I didn't have any sort of like you know sort of like VR remake versions of the point-and-click games like security breach one had I was like really disappointed right because that was my favorite part of Security Breach 1. I know some people are like, they like the, the mini games more. But, uh. I don't know. I, I was a more fan of, like, the more remake type stuff. I think recently some people were giving him shit again for what he has to say about the FNAF lore or whatever. Okay, if there's anyone who cannot be given shit for the FNAF lore, is the fucking guy who made it. In terms of, like, what he thinks about it, right? Because, like, it's the word of God, right? But they can give him shit for how fucking crazy and convoluted it is and how, like, nothing makes sense. But, like, I don't know. That, to me, that's kind of, I don't know. I'm a weirdo. The fact that nothing makes sense in FNAF is kind of the charm and why I like it. It's so fucking ridiculous. Really, my, my only, like, gripe with the lore and how, how it went with FNAF is how there was like a shift to like more sci-fi elements instead of uh, being like more strictly paranormal. But then like you realize like like Scott started out making like sci-fi like RPGs and stuff like that. And so like he was just doing what he wanted to do and doing stuff that he liked. So you know I, I can I can respect that even if it's not like a direction that I personally like enjoy or agree with. I mean, event. Ultimately, it's it's his, right, to do with he pleases with. But I, I like. I mean, some of it's fucking stupid. Like the fucking illusion ships are absolutely like just. I don't know. You have to be wearing your pants on your head to like. The sci-fi stuff started with sister location, right? That would make sense. Yeah, it did start with sister location. I mean, technically, I guess you could talk about like the books too. The books really has a, they have a lot of stupid shit. And the problem is, like, so the books and the games and now the movie, 
right? Are all like different continuities, but there's so many shared elements that you kind of have to dumb that like some of like the stupid details like carry over between continuities. Like the shit with like Remnant and Agony and like all the wacky shit that William Afton has fucking built. Like again, the illusion ships and stuff like it's just stupid. Like it's not even like like enjoyably bad. It's just it's just kind of like, okay, like, don't let him cook, right? Like. Oh god, agitated skeleton. Oh! Man tits over there fucking blowing me up. Where the hell am I? Where's my water? There it is. I need something to drink. <coughs> oh, man. Oh, no. <coughs> <coughs> oh, man. That water decided when to go to my lungs. Oh. <coughs> Went down. Went down the wrong pipe. Oh, that was that was awful. I was drowning, Chad. I was drowning. <laughs> we managed to avoid drowning. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. I wasn't actually drowning. It was Hyperbole. Hyperbole. Oh, I... As a casual onlooker from just your FNAF videos, I become interested in the lore, but without a proper guide, it's a mess. Yeah. There's a few YouTubers that I like to listen to, because they kind of talk about and ramble about the lore. And, uh, it's actually kind of funny. I kind of listen to this shit like when I go to bed because like it's just good background noise and eventually like my brain attempts trying to like even make sense of it all and just gives up and I just enjoy the noise and go to sleep. <laughs> so uh, there's uh, there's one YouTuber I, I really like. Uh, she, she makes good theory videos called her channels like I think it's like not real name not at all or something like that she has some good videos some of them are pretty fucking silly i think she made like a like a tier list of like which animatronics are the most smoochable <laughs> it's fucking some whack-ass shit but like it's not like to me like it's one of those things where you can tell like it's just more done to be like silly than to like someone actually wants to like go around like sucking face with the animatronics. I mean, I know there are people like that out there and that that's what disturbs me. But like nobody's using the word smooch in a serious context, at least not anymore. There's another channel I found recently who makes really good fucking FNAF videos. Oh god, what what, what, what what's he called? What's he called? Oh my god, I can't find it. This is not... What the heck? This... I don't remember watching any of this shit. <laughs> uh, Boon Swooch, or Bon Swooch is another one. He's pretty good. Uh, there was this one guy. Oh god, what's he called? I know. I'm like, I think he's like, like Bonk Boy or something like that. Is he right? Bonk Boy. And he's got a picture of like the scout. Yeah. He does like a lot of stuff where he just rambles about like PJ Headwood, I think his name. 
like in his voice acting and stuff for like spring trap and so like, he he goes like way too far into it uh which is perfect for when i'm just trying to listen to shit and go like and like like go to sleep uh but he has like a 40 minute video of like analyzing the very few voice lines that Springtrap has had to like explain how it characterizes William Afton. Like it's fucking like it's insane. It is like peak FNAF fan like fucking just like off the wall like shit. But I don't know. It's kind of enjoyable. I en like, at least I enjoy it, but I also like FNAF. So like you know, your mileage will vary. <laughs> There's also this really cool person on YouTube. They make like really great like let's play like stream VODs called like Otato. You should really check out that channel. It's uh, you know, make sure like you like they're a really good friend of mine. So it's like, you know, like favorite subscribe. I really like the Nick of Times animations and cosplays. His withered Bonnie is sick. Is that the guy? He's like the furry who made the really good fucking spring trap and like glam rock like Freddy ones. I know there was one guy. He like 3D printed like a whole suit for like glam rock Freddy. And uh. It looked really cool. I remember, like, there's a video of him going to the, like the arcade, and like, like kids were going fucking ape shit because Freddy Fazbear was there. It was like, it was pretty cute. Now that's someone else. Okay, I'll have to check out Nick of Time then. He's got like a withered Bonnie cosplay. That sounds dope. There's this one girl that's on YouTube. I cannot remember what she's called, but she makes oh, the regular sauce of that guy. Okay. But yeah, there's this chick and she makes like pipe cleaner figures and they're like really cute. And she made uh, a pipe cleaner Bonnie, which uh, I really liked. And it was like, I mean, it was like a posable figure. Like it wasn't just like, oh, here's like a thing that like, it's just like pipe cleaner trash, right? Like, no, she like. She made like an exoskeleton and then wrapped like more pipe cleaner around the exoskeleton so that like it would look like a suit and stuff like that. Like it was insane. I did not even know you could do shit like this. I am the head of this corporation. All your work and discoveries here belong to me. It was mine before you even found him. There was another person. Oh yeah, there was someone who they took like an old like animatronic doll and they made like a a plush trap out of him. That was cool too. It's kind of a shame they don't make cool merch like that, right? They just make like Funko Pop. Like 50 million Funko Pop. That don't even look like the characters, right? That's I don't know how he lives, but not anymore. UAC transit ready for departure. Okay, where's it open? Please be seated. The tram is now ready to depart. The UAC's adventure. <laughs> like, what, what's going on with the, the light there? Wow, okay, I uh. I fucking failed that one. That's fine. Uh, we're gonna do a BRB now. That seems like a good idea. Uh, and when we get back, it'll be cyberpunk time. So stick around, right? Enjoy the music. G grab yourself uh, a drink. Use the bathroom, whatever. Because uh, we'll uh, be right back. 